Special thanks to Zephylin Dantus for the story. Please check him out in the description below. Now on to the story. Following the scheduled arrival into the Empire in 442 system, Exo Dallas ordered a preliminary exploration path, taking us past the four planets in the system in order to do initial medium range scans and analysis. The PEP took us uneventfully past the three solid planets, of which one was at a distance to the star, permitting it to have liquid water. It wasn't until we were en route to the gas giant that Captain Darish ordered a course change, disrupting the planned flyby by setting a course that would result in the tricard colliding with the core of the planet. As the sensors indicated of the gas giant's gravity well beginning to have an effect on the ship's trajectory, the sensor suite operator detected a construct, initially deemed to be a ship of non-human origin, positioned in a location that would have put the tricard in a compromised position had the captain not ordered the course adjustment. The ship turned around and discharged a high-energy weapon, searing the tricard's in-atmosphere dorsal fin. The captain ordered a close proximity flyby near the gas planet's surface. This resulted in enough turmoil on the surface of the planet to create a smoke screen covering the evasive course of the tricard and allowed for a high effect slingshot maneuver to accelerate the ship on an escape trajectory, conserving enough to extend the exploration range by a factor of 0.32. One week and 42 hours later, we docked at the Terran Exploratory Way Station Curious. The Admiral leaned back in his chair as the clerk finished reading the report out loud. Is this your report, Lieutenant Hansen? It is, Admiral. He rolled a bit forward with his torso and rested his elbows on the half-circle-shaped table in front of him. The remaining six high-ranking officers, flanking him with three on each side, said nothing. You are aware of Captain Darris's, he cleared his throat softly, unique situation. I nodded. Yes, I am aware of the captain's exotic behavior. One of the officers on the end of the table choked a giggle. The rest held their faces in parade fixation. The Admiral sighed. We all are, Lieutenant, which is why we've called you into this hearing. I cocked my head, indicating a professional confusal, the Admiral continued. Knowing what we do about Captain Derish, and having seen plenty of ARs from his crew, reading an AR that actually sounds like a routine exploration, despite encountering an alien vessel. He paused, choosing his words carefully. This is the odd one out. Admiral, my report follows every protocol regarding AAR submission and... We know this and recognize that as the highest ranking bridge crew. Apart from the commanders, your AAR is the one submitted. You have done nothing wrong, Lieutenant. He leaned back in his seat, his brows crunched up in worried figures on his forehead. A colonel on the Admiral's right leaned into her microphone. We would like to hear what actually happened, Lieutenant, and more importantly, why you would cover it up like this. I see. I reached out and grabbed the glass of water. Taking a sip, I gathered my thoughts. Let me start with some background, I began. The Colonel snorted and started reading out from my records. I looked at the Admiral, who silenced the Colonel with a hand gesture. Go ahead, he said as he nodded at me. Are you familiar with the Planes Ivo system? I didn't wait for their reply. Don't worry, very few are. It is essentially an asteroid field the size of Sol System, orbiting a dying red dwarf star. The few ships that make it there without being freighters have one thing in common and one thing only. They've got nowhere else to go and no funds to go any further. I was born in that system. For those of you who are Terran by birth, it is the space equivalent of a trailer park. And by comparison, I am the son of trailer park trash. My parents were asteroid miners and made their daily lives bearable by inhaling FTL fuel fumes through their EVA life support. That left me, a 10-year-old boy, with two options, rock skimming or FTL snorting. I chose skimming. Half the officers looked like I had declared war on their sense of justice. Rock skimming is basically the asteroid field equivalent of a drag race. In Sol, you have an annual tournament that runs from planetary orbit to adjacent planetary orbit. We raced from microplanet to microplanet, surface to surface, through the asteroid field, 
And yes, it is very illegal. It gave me purpose. I had an old dying skimmer, and I couldn't get spare parts or find a repair shop anywhere. So I learned to read, write, repair, and fly. I was good at it, so good that I could join the Terran Fleet Academy on merit of having six years of experience on my piloting credentials by the age of 19. Now don't get me wrong, flying a starship from System A to System B and then plotting a course is all good and fun, but I took another sip of my water. The seven people sitting in a half circle, all facing me, all looked like I was about to drop a bomb in their laps. It doesn't hold the challenge of interpreting Captain Darris's orders or executing them. I guess the reason for me to be very precise on protocol when it comes to the AAR is this. Darish is a skilled captain and a good man for no other reason than that. He deserves my loyalty, and if you want more, he challenges me. The Admiral gave me a soft smile. That is two very good reasons, Lieutenant, now. What really happened? We arrived in the system without the captain on the bridge. He had been busy with his afternoon snack during the FTL transit and had spilled the contents of his sippy cup on his Santa suit. Exo Dallas had suggested to him that he'd go change into something that wouldn't stain from prune juice if there was a repeat spillage and the captain had agreed and moonwalked off the bridge so not as to stain the floor behind him while sucking on the tassel of his hat. Exo Dallas ordered the routine flyby so we could gather data for the science pack and I plotted the course. After we'd passed the second planet, Captain Darish returned to the bridge and declared siesta from the doorway. I turned and watched as he tried to maneuver an oversized sombrero through the opening while keeping it on his head. In failing to do so, the captain ordered the sombrero confined to the brig and had two security staff escort the hat to confinement, complete with a standing order to interrogate it and file a tribunal for failure to properly negotiate spatially proportionate access ways with regards to rank and procedure. The colonel lowered her head in defeated realization of what the folder on her desk labeled Sergeant Hattie Maxombrero Disciplinary Case contained. The captain then took his seat in a loving embrace and engaged in what I can only describe as aggressive courting with the chair as we approached the third planet. The chair had refused his repeated attempts at second base long enough for him to abandon the plan of action. He grabbed a banana and made eye contact with me. I don't care how many battles you've seen or what war zones you've witnessed. You've never seen pure evil until you've held eye contact with a man eating a banana without removing the peel first. He even ate the little sticker. Hansen, he said as we'd passed the third planet still keeping eye contact. Adjust course by three degrees port, 2.5 down. I looked around at the faces on the other side of the table and shrugged. After seven tours with Darris, you stop asking questions. I adjusted the course and every collision alarm on the bridge went off. 30 seconds later, the sensor operator spotted the alien vessel and... You've described it as non-human, a general from tactical command said, interrupting me. I did, sir. Flying saucer seemed a bit unprofessional for an after-action report. Agreed, continue. Thank you. Darish threw himself on the decking as the alien weapon discharged, and the damage report on my screen noted that inatmospheric flight was discouraged. That was when the captain jumped onto his console and yelled, Surf's up, my dude! Cowabunga! So I turned the tricard off collision course and switched to the gravimetric engines, skimming the surface of the gas planet, like a surfboard, weaving left and right, following the instructions of the captain. The maneuver whirled enough gas up behind us to create a gas smoke screen for us to hide behind, hopefully making whatever targeting systems they had on that ship useless. They did, however, follow us into the cloud, and when they fired their energy weapon again, they ignited the cloud surrounding them. I caught the gravity well velocity of the planet and used it to slingshot us into the exit path from the system. The rest occurred, as the report says. The Admiral looked at me, his eyes trying to convey something I couldn't understand. The tricard needs to have half the armor plating replaced, are you sure you just skimmed the surface of that gas giant? 
I shrugged. Must have been corrosive gas, sir. He nodded slowly and dismissed me. When I got back to the tricard, I told Captain Darish what had happened at the hearing. His reply was this. There's a sticker on bananas. If you enjoyed this story and wants to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that comments I enjoyed the story, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.